chapter to victory and immortalize yourself and your guild in Conqueror's Hall. Do you have what it takes? Introducing Season 7. Hello, hello. Hello, doing good. Thank you, Chosen. I, th I think you're muted. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Even better than being muted, I have no microphone. There we go. Now we have a microphone. Aha. So, as I was just saying, we're running a little bit behind today as I just reinstalled OBS and just got everything ready. So, let's start again with the whole introduction as Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world, keeping you up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of August, and I am your host, Chosen. And with me today is not only my co host, Fogo, but we have a co, co, co host, Action Compassion. How are you doing today, sirs? Second try, best try. Hello, everybody. Yeah, second Welcome. group, best group. Doing good. Good work, boys. Thank you. Yeah, we will get this uh, figured out sooner rather than later. But we have, as I said, we are running behind because, oh, my God, this computer nonsense. Rebuilding these computers, Bogle. <laughs> well, it has to be done at some point. Yeah, right? well, it has we to have, get done. We it have to, to try be. to be professional at some point in time. Why not start now? How about that? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm literally getting today. things let me, built let me as do we this do this. while you figure out your your yeah. things falling off the wall there. <laughs> um, we have a few reminders for you today. A few PSAs. We have a little bit of community news. Uh, we'll t spend some time looking at the rankings, but mostly in today's show, we will be doing a little bit of an interview uh, with the great Action Compassion. And uh, before we uh, go into the Albion Live segment in about an hour, where Action Compassion is our special guest caster today. So we want to spend today's show to getting uh, to know him a little bit uh, in the second part of the show. Yeah. Shodan, are you are you done there yet? Are you? <laughs> I'm, I don't think we're gonna ever be done here, but I have got lots. It's just all constantly falling down all around me. The fact that we even have this thing up and running. It's almost a little bewildering to me. But we do have some PSAs, some notes, and some official updates, as we do have some test server patch notes to talk about from yesterday. We're just going to give a quick PSA reminder, if you will. Guys, Yes. there's a patch coming out. Tomorrow. Ta-da! Yeah. It's going to have the, the new changes for the land auction system that did not impact anybody this last time, uh, which ended, what, three days ago? Mm-hmm. But in the future, bids are going to be a little bit more expensive for people, aren't they? In a couple of ways. So Yes. You... Uh, specifically, the winning bid will be collected in full. Mm -hmm. So you have to be more cautious about what you bid for your plots. Um, but uh, as we talked about in yesterday's show and I think on Friday's show as well, this is just a reminder that the patch notes uh, are out and this patch should be coming out tomorrow together with the change to the adventurous challenge mounts uh, can uh, no longer be used in GVGs and that should affect city fights mostly and the rest is just a bunch of very good additional graphical UI audio and other fixes for you uh, that we can enjoy tomorrow yes then we have the also the other reminder that the NDA balance playlist um, changes are also uh, up for discussion. I will link both the test server ones and the balance playtest now in Twitch chat if you want to take a look yourself. 
this is always where the great retro man posts the current in playtest changes for you all to see so you can get an idea of what might be coming up soon and if you're curious you can take a look there as well i think i'm looking at the wrong it's on the very bottom yes yeah. and the the most recent changes are are in bold yeah text there we go yeah the current iteration where he's uh, changed like we talked about yesterday the the crowd control is a big one this is going to have a huge effect, and we believe this one's going in, Absolutely. going in effect because of the changes to territory control. Um, now, Action Compassion, you, you lead a, a number of fights out there in the world of ZVZ. How quickly do those clothies die after they get stunned for their entire life? <laughs> well, I mean, for McDonald's, our ZVZ is pretty ragtag, but we've had some nice success. Clothies die very quickly. I mean, as a healer... I know a lot of our new healers wanted to get some nice, juicy ZVZ loot, and they quickly realized that they had to do it very carefully or they'd get, get killed 100 to 0. Quick, uh, quick dunkaroo. What? Chosen still typing. Um, yeah, I, I'm doing like four things at once. Don't mind me. Uh, just continue enjoying the, <laughs> the new uh, patch notes. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we need to talk more about this uh, because we have we talked about it so much yeah. in the last few days. Uh, one thing I want to mention really briefly, though, before we start the interview, is that we have new uh, shufflings around in the uh, season seven rankings. We still have Money Guild on the very top position with mm -hmm. now one hundred and fourteen thousand points, followed in second place by June with ninety one thousand points. Hmm. Which is daddy. different. Yes, that the the daddy daddy alliance, right? Yeah, they're they're doing yes. work, uh, daddy alliance. Uh, kind of scary when you look at the map and so see how much of the world now belongs to them. It's daddy and oops are the two big ones right now. You could easily say that without uh, really worrying. Um, I mean the the bed bunk gang or bunk bed gang. What are they? The bunk bed monster gang. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> those guys they're they're not bed gang yeah they're they're doing some work too but right now with with june and oops and it's just oops is freaking unbelievable right now and how many territories they've just been holding since invasion day when they got everything for free without squad there to protest uh it's it's going to be interesting to see if that happens again this upcoming invasion day do you think we're going to see another repeat of that uh ac do you think we'll see more uh, push back against Oops, or is it going to be the same situation where Oops just takes this and crushes? I think it's hard to say right now. Are you saying specifically with Oops in June or Oops overall? Oops overall just didn't get any competition is what the problem was last uh, Invasion Day. We didn't see any competition from anybody from... In Mercia. Yeah. Well, we got the new Life Alliance now. Life is back. Yeah. I shouldn't say new, but they're back. Well, because Not life doesn't really have then, a ZBZ. That's the one PG that's alliance. True. I mean, I, I guess version. I'm pretty naive and idealistic. Yeah, uh, I just don't. I don't see uh, one PG and exertion putting much force together to really. I mean, Derek is very tenacious. I'm sure his ZBZ force will be nasty. Along with you got Metatron in there too. Mm -hmm. They put up a good fight. Yeah, I think. I think. I don't know. Now that I'm more involved in Albion politics, you know, I think might definitely does make right. But there's a lot of, a lot of chess going on, a lot of uh, long-term plays. I feel, so, I think it's always a surprise. It's like an MMA fight. You never know. You never know. You get knocked out in the first round. Yeah. We we thought Black Order was knocking out everybody and just mm -hmm. running away Black with Order. it, and, and now I'm they just sure. stopped. It seems who like. leads Black Order? I thought it was Milky Way at first at the leadership, but I'm not sure who the GM is. Korg? K O R J? Oh, Probably an alt. I don't know. Alt of someone, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I, I mean, Shosen yeah, sort ahead. of made a joke about uh, the, I think it's the X02 and Echo Fred Army guys banding together to make Blood Ah. Army. So he's he jokingly said that uh, any sort of Russian conglomerates like this always lasted for about three weeks and then stopped existing. 
um, and now we are worried that he called it and Black Order just stopped and we were, we are still trying to figure out what's going on. Um, mm. But it, now that June took over and phrasing also managed to hit gold there at 60k, they might be the next ones to overtake them then if Black Order really stopped, question mark? I, I think they did. Like, I, I know I made a joke about it, but it, I think that it's it's a very... Um, maybe it was a poignant ob observation and not a joke. Uh, they just uh, <laughs> they, they seem to be gone and done. Like, how many points did they get since yesterday? A thousand, maybe? If that? Yeah. I mean... It looks to me like June is almost catching up to Money Guild now because they, like, not catching up. Like, I mean, they're making ground, I should say. Not catching up. Catching up would mean, oh, yeah, they gained 5,000 points on them yesterday. No, but they're getting closer while Money Guild is, and every, there's just so, so many points. But uh, Phrasing, their alliance right now, the Bunk Bed Gang has over 140 territories. That's... It's a lot of and not a, and not a lot of points though, right? Well, they, I mean, comparatively to Money Guild, no, they have less than you know, well, a little bit more than half, you know. But they're they're not not nearly as many. But you have to say that's probably because Money Guild wins its crystals. Hmm. Okay. True. I see Money Guild at the level seven crystals all the time. Yeah, they with they fighting uh, June team. Yeah, right now, the, I think that's where the crystal fight is. Uh, what's probably separating June and Money Guild is the overworld stuff, which Money Guild still has. They've gotten back their TC powerhouse. They've got uh, a lot of other guys in there who are doing work oh, yeah, and oops, making sure they have Take the ZBZ care. forces around. And if you can control those castles, if you can control the overworld presence and get those points and stop Arch from stealing your shit, you're going to do pretty well. And I think that's the difference right now between the two is I believe June might be losing more stuff to the their surrounding players. It's much more contested up there in Glauvia than it is over but in Mercia. Talking about doing well, how about sorry, we talk Solurian. about... Not Glauvia, Solurian. Yeah? Talking about Action Compassion and his great guild doing very well. How, how well are they we, doing? Should we? Do you want um, us to look up your ranking in the season rankings? Well, I first want to say you can't really stop Arch from stealing to... If, to a certain extent, you know, but you can mitigate the damage. I know Arch, from what I've heard, um, they they influence the politics quite a bit with their ZZ Force, their sort of pirate mob of quick looters. Uh, my guild, yes, please, let's display it. I'm trying um, to find uh, out how to spell your guild's how... name here, to be honest. Well, uh, yeah, the, the O is with a zero. I actually emailed SBI begging them to change the name, but they told me the policy was they do not interfere. So I respected that. All right, here we go. Not too bad. 262 members, three territories, part of the great ego. Um, <laughs> how? We're getting launched on hard. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know anybody was still sticking around in ego. I thought ego had folded. I thought ego was done. I thought Torthor had joined what? I thought he had paid money for something. I, I don't know. I heard maybe I heard some. Torther just words. keeps going. Torther keeps going. He keeps going forward, and uh, so we can work with him for sure. Okay, it's nice and simple sometimes. But yeah, there's been major changes. I believe Hustling Hitman went to Oops. But McDonald's basically basically sleeps on the ZBZ right now. We're we're kind of shitty Alliance members, mm -hmm. but we're trying to hold it up in GVG. Um, we're fighting U12 and Launchpad today. Oh, those are Launchpad and, is one uh, of those up and coming guilds that you know we should pay more attention. Yeah, to. they're interesting. They're interesting. We lost one of our main tanks to them. They did a good job of uh, poaching and building up and logistics. Uh, they're they're an interesting guild, and they're 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 getting lots of GVJ activity out here in Banglia. You know, mm -hmm. it's a bit cheaper out here, and people make fun of us. But I like Banglia so far. Ever since we got evicted from Pengouth. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, keeping those home plots can be difficult. Uh, do you, are you looking forward to the idea of these new? Because uh, I guess we can transition here into some little bit of speculation. Are you looking forward to these new hideouts and the idea of having like anybody can get like a home plot now? Is that uh, interesting to you? Well, um, well, I woke up. 
I woke up at like I woke up early in the morning one day to, and I got a bunch of messages from someone saying town plots are going to be worthless in the upcoming patch. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why is that because of hideouts perhaps? Well, in the upcoming patch, uh, from territories I, are going away. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. the home plots are. Well, that's not confirmed. Confirmed. It, it's we are speculating. There's heavy speculation. Speculating. Yeah, heavy in speculation. In the new map, once the hideouts mm -hmm. are released, there will be no home plot territories that uh, act as if they. The, the current as way. a logical consequence, that would mean they're going away, right? So. Yeah. I, I think it's hard to say the value of them is because they might just disappear. I think it's what happened. Uh, yeah, I so think I don't they're know. just going away. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think, well, when the new map hits, there just won't be any is what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, but that's the speculation that nobody knows when the new yeah. map is hitting. But yeah. Until then. With Avalon and all that. Yes. But until then, nobody far. knows how long they will be, I think. Perhaps, perhaps. I'm purely speculating. I'm not on the round table. Well, even on the so round what, table, what do we know don't know. Him? I will say that. We don't know for well, sure. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. I see. We're Good to clarify. So hideouts, I think, are very, very cool. I think it's a really awesome idea. I'm actually impressed that the developers consistently come up with fresh ideas. Uh, to me, they're fresh. I know, I know that they get a lot of hate on the forums right away, mm -hmm. but I feel like the ideas are fresh, and I'm always interested to see how it'll shake up because Albion is just so unique, you know, one server, global community, so many languages and cultures. Uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. <laughs> it's it's uh I I want to I, I want to say that uh like I'm super excited about having hideouts themselves, but it's not the hideouts that really like get me cuz I I feel like I'm a little confused as to hideouts and how they're going to work and how they're going to be taken over and stuff. Because they do feel like home plot light in a lot of way. And I don't know what it is, the mechanic that you actually knock down the door. So I am i can't say I'm like, oh, yeah. But the idea that everybody will be able to live in the Outlands, super excited for. The idea that people will be able to upgrade their towers and that tower over time and that territory itself will help... Uh, allow groups living together in that territory to establish an identity that this is their thing and it's not just five guys who are going to defend it. it'll be like everybody you know zvzing in the area and oftentimes it won't just be one guild that ends up defending it it'll be the people who live there and if it's like one you know guild owns it but there are seven other guilds who live there everybody who lives there is going to be like no you stay out of our our uh home you know you can't come here and it'll be Nobody will be gathering there if they're not, you know, from the area. Nobody will be, you know, traveling through. You'll see people straight up defending their borders because you never know when somebody's going to be like, okay, I'm going to try to make some influence in this area, get some PvP, push you guys down, then come time for, uh, you know, tower attack hour, we're going to move here and take your shit. I think people are going to be much more defensive of their borders. And that will lead to, if you're defensive of your borders, it'll lead to that identity feeling like, this is mine. And uh, I haven't felt that way since Beta 1, and I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, nice. I wasn't a part of Beta 1, so I, I'm not quite sure what uh, what was going on there. But I'm very curious. And uh, any chance we could get, like, the home plot changes on the screen right now, Chosen? Or is that disrupting your sh uh, the 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 notes for this? Yeah, I can yeah, like pull that up. I, like, I know a lot of people in my guild don't even know yet. And so I mean, the issue with that is that as far <clears throat> it was, it is not public knowledge, that post. It's just from the roundtable, but this post was leaked to the public. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Um, I see. I see. And the, so the problem we have is we literally cannot link it because nobody can see it. Right? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair and, enough. Uh, I did not know. So, uh, Shosen can log into the forest and pull it. But I'm logged but, in on the forums as something else right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, so each hideout will have a bank. Robin Hood says, in "Yes, chat. yeah, it, it's basically a little cave. You you start, and then you have a way to respawn there, and then you can upgrade that hideout. The higher you upgrade it, the you know, the more shields it gets for defending and the more buildings uh, and even, I think, farm plots as well you will have in that. So it's it's almost like a territory and farm plot combined that you have, uh, you know, to upgrade over time. 
And then as you upgrade it, it gets better and bigger and you can you know, store more and build more buildings in it and upgrade it similarly to a home plot with hopefully more options as to you know, what you can do with it. And the, the cool thing about it is that it doesn't occupy a fixed spot in the world. Mm -hmm. So it, you can literally go to a map and just choose a spot where in the current map you're you know, limited by the options you have. And, and this way, it, it should make the placing and uh, you know location of your home a little bit different from what it is now. And I heard that the hideouts will be instantly like if they get invaded, you're not getting any sort of warning. It's no. like back in the really old right. days. Yeah, like uh, people are like asking in chat, and usually we don't answer chat uh, right away. But we'll oh, do I that see. Today. My bad. No, my no, bad. no, it's fine. No, no, I'm gonna do that today because there are a lot of questions about this right now, and uh, it's an interesting thing. So if you were attacked, uh, so you start out at level one, and you'll have two shields. All right, if you're a level one, and so if somebody attacks you while you're vulnerable and takes down your shield, and you're down to one shield, and you lose that one shield, it's like original home plots everything's gone that's cool like the only thing Very that you cool. get back is the stuff that you had in your personal chest not the guild chest not in boxes around the world not resources from the buildings that you made just the that uh personal chest that you have your personal bank with your tabs hmm. that and, will... and there's even talk about how long it will take you to get them back and yeah it'll probably be at least that three days. you will have to pay some sort of silver so you can't do you know teleporting so if you lose it you're incur a loss for sure yeah maybe like a 25 percent damage just like if you had died in the yellow like, zone or something yeah. just like speculation but it's, it'll be something along those lines so there's some sort of negative effect so you can't just move your stuff uh to mm -hmm. like a, a nearby city but it will be very 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 brutal if you lose your stuff but you know it's it reminds me of those old home plots remember when people would evacuate their stuff on that final shield and everybody's getting worried and they're like oh no we're not gonna be able to defend ourselves that was some of the best times really looking forward to seeing how ruthless people get with that that's one part about it um i mean the defense though is if you upgraded your home plot for a bit Right, so and you you start with I think one or two shields. Two and then shields, and then you, you can you upgrade to four more. shields. Then you can upgrade to six shields. Like right, so far, right. the well, that's the uh, an, and it and it takes twenty four hours to take down one shield, right? Yes. So to get to take down a level six or tier six uh, home uh, hideout would take six continuous days of siege to get it done, uh, and that's a big ask if you established a big one like this. Interesting. Yeah. So it, it, we think it's going to turn a lot of the, you know, ownership of and, and feeling like owning a place of the world and making a part of uh, or making your part of the world a thing um, very different from what it is now. Mm -hmm. But personally, I think it will make it better and more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I... I hope that it leads to more mobile guilds like that, you know, because so often now guilds will get into their home plot, right? And they just stay there mm -hmm. forever. That's where they live till the till they die. Uh, well, people will have stayed in their same home plot from the beginning of the map until the the map is dead. <laughs> I mean, it, it's gone, you know, it's so uh, and they've never moved up in the world while they always could have. You know, I'm looking at guilds like Phrasing and stuff who uh, just stay over in the easy side of the world while they could have always done better. And uh, they're at least a Cumbria-level guild. Um, mm. And I, I feel that it's it's a couple of things that, that lead to that. There's not enough incentive to move. It's too difficult to move. And I'd, I'd like to see both those things change in the new map. Like, that there's more incentive to move towards the center and when you choose to move by your own uh, volition, that it could be easier. Like, say, uh, and now this is speculation. I've, we've talked to Robin about it a little bit, but no clear uh, um, resolution on this. That if you make a, a second hideout, I would love to see a way to move your old hideout to your second hideout. Like, once you've already established it there, you know, moving that plot over. So that, you, but then you're then you're looking at transportation transportation issues, issues. Yes, and that's the that's the discussion right now. Like, is it because there's so much negative repercussions for moving that once you've established yourself, you know, that it mm. you'd like to see some way of, of 
taking away the monotony of it, like the the, the mm -hmm. rebuilding process, because you want people to move towards the center of the map. So it's the idea of how do you make it less monotonous, but still also incur the danger of moving? Maybe that you can only move so far, or to move you actually have to bring like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a special type of mammoth, you know, like a home plot mammoth. You know, like a hideout mammoth that carries all your shit over, and then it plops it down in the new location. But you a already have to have caravan. Yeah, I, I, like you, you need hmm, let's say four mammoths and five thousand tier eight stone and planks, and maybe like <laughs> something click, click. ridiculous. Yeah, I would, I would, yes, I would like to, you know because I, I to no, me no, that, but that's just speculation. Just, no, that's I, I have a happen. question. It's not for, happening. For I, I'm pretty sure though. it's going to be you. You can have as many home plots or uh, not home plots, as many. Hideouts as you want, and you can build each one up individually. But okay, go, what were you asking in action? I wanted to ask you if you look at the current map and you could just put down your home base, your hideout somewhere in the current map without having to choose one of the existing territories, where would you do that? Or where would you try to do that and why? What do you mean without choosing one of the existing territories? No. Um, and territories in terms of home plot. I mean, like you look at a zone. Okay, any would, zone. Yeah. Yeah. Would you straight up go for the heart of Mercia, or would you say, well, I want my own place in, in the border, okay. in the far away? Okay. Thinking and, tactics and everything, and like yeah. what my guild can do. Hmm. Like, also like assuming, if I was trying to be reasonable that, and yeah. Okay. Assuming I, what? Assuming that if you go too close to a stronger entity that doesn't like you, that you might yeah. get kicked out. Well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, McDonald's is a guild that you know we 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 fear eviction. We fear eviction. We're not we're not at the phrasing level yet. <laughs> but if I was gonna choose anywhere in the world for a home plot, I would want to live in the Royals. To be honest, somewhere in the Royals, first of all, if that's allowed. If that's not allowed, then in the Black Zone, I would choose. Hmm. Probably like an in betweener, like a Hot Shadows Plain, Slitherstone Hill type thing, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. play the middle. Okay. Talk to both sides, have lots of neighbors, you know, so I don't get lonely, and uh, make a lot of <laughs> mess. <laughs> I try to have cool. some fun. So yeah, as a player though, here's here's a question: Would you rather have yeah. a situation where you uh, you're you're constantly fighting back and forth for uh, a, a few towers say like there's three or four towers that you fight over on a, on a weekly basis and you lose them sometimes and you keep them sometimes or would you rather have a situation where you try to take things and just hold them for, for a really dominate yeah um, do you think it's more fun i think it depends i think if albion had some uh if the if we added in the future some mechanics to make it fresh to even not to just consistently fight in the same area with maybe like random spawns of items and incentives or things and objectives. I think, I think I'd want to do both. You know, once my guild got to a level where we mm. could really push out, I would want to test, you know, test the, test the empire. How, how, how long can we go before we're too thin to defend? So say, say there was a situation where you, you had like an, an area June that... doing right now areas that are easy to defend but then there are areas that are very hard to defend and keep for a long period yeah, of time and so like, for sure you, you'd like you have two neighbors who are fighting over do each have like one tower that's very easy to defend say so it can be built up easily has good guards and whatnot but in between yeah. those zones there's like two three four zones that are very hard to keep and require but high work yeah but like you know more value but you want to fight over them daily and like the they would go back and forth to do whoever just really brings the, the like a king of the hill day. type thing yeah. maybe you know like maybe there's some uh elevation of terrain in the future and those 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 uh like like a starcraft 2 map where it's like you want to get higher up there for the yellow crystals and mm -hmm. you're gonna get it's more i definitely think that's a cool idea I mean, it makes me think of my time in, say, my Metatron, where they would just, you know, they said, BN Aiden is our home, mm -hmm. and we're always going to go for it, no matter how hard. And I always uh, I always respected that. Yeah, I, I love the idea of having perceived value on territories, as opposed to, yeah, like, real value. Yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely, absolutely. I mean... The the GM of Ju the GM of June gave me a lot of grief for be trying to pay Mercs for Pen Gauth because 
It was like, it's not even worth it. And we knew that as a guild too back in the day, but we, we had so much sentimental value and the guildies just wanted to defend it. So I, I really agree with you. I really think the players making that lore is really important for the game. Absolutely, yeah. I, for uh, for me, my favorite times in the game were when I had a place that I considered my home and I cared more about the, the false idea of defending my borders than I did about even getting resources and making stuff. And when people would come into our territories, we would you know go and attack them just because you're not allowed here. And that part of the game was just so much fun. And I'm hoping that this idea of it being more about the guilds um, defending their own place instead of five people, that you'll see those guilds move into their, their territories because their hideout is right there, if you will. And the, the five-man team through the Crystal League can improve the tower's resource you know, generation and how good that area, that tower is, you know, gets better depending on how good you do as a gvg team if your guild really lives there it'll make that perceived value more real for people and people will want to be like get the hell out of my territory you're not coming maybe here. Let, this is ours what if we let five man teams fight for dungeon ownership or something like that hmm. that'd be crazy that that would be crazy but that would be interesting as well i i mean there's always like the idea that there could always oh no i'm not joining your guild there could always be uh, some other uh, additional thing for 5v5s because I think they're pretty clear that they don't want to get rid of them. They don't want them to I go see, away. Yeah. Uh, and they want to see yeah. 5v5 staying, but they they don't like 5v5s as a territory control uh, system. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. totally fine with that not being there. Uh, never been a... a I mean... A huge fan of it for territory control, but I love watching 5v5s. I just hate the idea of five men controlling the world. Well, I think with the direction it's going, like you say, maybe a 5v5 team could fund a ZVZ force. I'm trying to think of the new guilds coming up that might stick around, you know, long after these veterans that might get upset or leave the game, you know. Maybe these new guilds that stick around, they would, they would use this to their advantage somehow. Because I definitely want to see five v five stick around too. I think it would be very healthy for Albion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I like the idea of. That's why I like the, the addition from just the the, the league being a way for you to rank yourself among other GVG players was cool. I liked that. But I think that making it have an impact on the towers themselves and making the territories, the entire territory, better depending on how high you can get that tower, is a great way of making it still valuable to a guild. And depending on how it works out, like in how like flexible ownership is, you could see some really interesting things happen as people fight for these really, you know, better towers that people have created. But we are uh, past the half hour mark, and I think we should probably oh. go to the point where we start answering questions from chat. We did it a little bit already mm -hmm. but we should probably switch to the next phase of the show so i'm going to give a quick rundown you guys can find us monday through friday right here on albion tv uh at twitch.tv forward slash albion online and uh, we do a gvg show three days a week hoping to do four tuesday through thursday we do the gvg shows at 19 and 20 utc and we're hoping to bring that to mondays as well this saturday we have the albion uh, monthly invasion event. Uh, it's going to be pretty great. We have, let's see, that is at, the official time that reset occurs is at 18 UTC. But we'll be here, I believe, at, at 1730 UTC on a 15-minute delay. And we will do the invasion for EU. Then we will come back again at 1230 UTC for the NA portion of the show but we're going to get out of here for about a minute i'm going to talk to these guys behind the scenes real quick figure out what we're doing for the next phase and then we'll be right back to answer your questions and i might even have a gold cold to give away so uh it should be fun all right anybody want to say anything before we're done and go away for a moment uh type your questions in twitch chat now so we can read them in a minute all right sounds good introducing